Hello and welcome to the third instalment of Kev's Headphone Corner. Um, one of you, it's very kindly, sent me the thinnest Amazon parcel in the history of the world. Me and Anna had no idea what this was when it arrived. It literally, it's like a letter. Um, it's got no note in there to say who it's from. So, I don't know who it's from. We definitely didn't order it. But, some absolute hero has sent us this. It took us a minute to figure out what they were, but they are light dims. Original strength dim, 50 to 80% of light. Um, they're little stickers that you peel off and stick over lights. So, one of you, and I can't emphasize this enough, this person is an absolute hero, saw me the other day sticking gaffer tape onto my headphones, which, it looks rubbish, um, to cover up this silly little flashing light that we get when it's telling me that the headphones are on, which is just, it's the stupidest thing in the world. I don't know why it has to do it, but it's that silly little flashing light. It flashes every eight seconds to tell you that the headphones are turned on, despite the fact that the lady who lives in the headphones has just also told me that the headphones are turned on. But rather than having an unsightly piece of gaffer tape, I can now replace that with one of these stickers as well as messing with the rest of the family by sticking these stickers onto all our other electrical devices. But I just select an appropriately sized sticker. So where's the thing it needs to go over? So it's that sort of size. So I think one of these square ones is probably what we're after. How do we get this off? Just peel it. Yeah, peel off a little square position it over that part of the headphone. Probably need tweezers to do this properly. But that is now stuck over there, much less unsightly than what we had in there before. I don't know how visible, I mean it still shines a little bit, but it's massively, massively dimmed compared to how it was before, which is an enormous improvement. So. Whoever did send me these, thank you very much. I mean, I can't tell at all now when that's turning off because the light is completely blacked out, which is brilliant. But thank you, whoever sent me those. I didn't know such a thing existed. That's really cool. I'm gonna take them into work tomorrow so that I can uh, start sticking them over computers and stuff and messing with the students. But I'm sure I'm gonna have multiple uses for those things. Um, we've got that security light in the garage as well, which has an annoying light on it. It could go over that on the router like it has on there. Just a really cool thing. Thank you very much. Headphones aside, it's been a really, really weird day. Um, I thought it was just me initially, but I woke up this morning, I did not want to get out of bed and it's so unlike me, I'm very much a morning person. No matter how late I'm up the night before, I usually just get straight up out of bed, I'm absolutely fine, just get up and get on with the day. But I didn't want to get up this morning, drag myself up when the alarm went off at six, and then had a shower and some breakfast and stuff. And then by, I don't know, 20 to seven, I was sat on the sofa um, watching YouTube videos and falling back to sleep again almost. Um, I managed to stop myself, got to work and everything. But when I got there, it wasn't just me. Everyone else there was really tired as well. I thought it was just me pushing myself too hard again. I've been up past midnight every night this week editing videos and stuff as I try and launch new videos on the gaming channel. But everyone was like it, all the staff were tired, everyone was a bit grumpy, and the students were all a bit like it as well. Everyone was a little bit grumpy, a little bit snappy. It was just, it's been a really odd day. It felt like, you know that first 10 minutes or so of Shaun of the Dead, and if you haven't seen Shaun of the Dead, it's a brilliant film that you need to go and watch. But it's the, it's the part of the film, it's a zombie film, and it's the part of the film where the zombie apocalypse hasn't started yet, but you're starting to, we as the viewers are seeing these little warning signs start to appear or hints that that's where it's going. But Sean, the protagonist, isn't noticing any of it. He's just stumbling through his day, being the zombie himself, if you will. And I felt, I feel a little bit like Sean at the start of Sean of the Dead. I'm expecting someone to walk up to me and tell me I've got red on me because I feel like there's lots of signs of impending doom happening just outside my peripheral vision, but I've been so tired and everyone else has been so grumpy, I just haven't noticed any of it. And 
the plan for tonight, I mean it is, it's not even, it's just before quarter to nine. I'll finish this vlog up, I've got a football manager video to do, and I'm just doing one video, editing it, and going to bed. I want to try and be in bed by 10 o'clock tonight. Just, if I can't fix the rest of the world, I'll fix myself. So if I do wake up tomorrow in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, at least I'll be the one most likely to make it to the Winchester and what is it, have a have a pint and wait for it all to blow over? Or I don't need to quote the entire film to you. Needless to say, it's a rather good film. I like it a lot. And I'm finally over those nasty TV people last year telling me I was Nick Frost just because I'm a rotund man with a beard. In other news, tomorrow's vlog, if all goes to plan, might not feature me at all. Anna is taking Andy out and about for the first time, pretty much for the first time since he's been off school, apart from the odd trips up to the shops and things like that. But there's a, like a, a play group's the wrong word, but like a thing. It's run by a, a local uh, autistic charity and they offer um, sessions once a week in Peterborough where they just open the doors. It's, ki it's for kids like Andy who aren't going to school and they just open the doors up. They've got like stuff in there that they can do, things they can play with, sensory stuff going on. And it's just invite anybody who's got a kid who would benefit from a sensory afternoon, invite them in to come and have an afternoon. Just doing some of the stuff that they miss out on by not being at school because one of the things he did like about school was the access to a sensory room that he had, which he doesn't have at home, so we don't have anywhere to put one and they cost an absolute fortune. So hopefully it all goes swimmingly, but I've set Anna up with my old, old video camera, not letting her out with one of the fancy ones, but she's going out with a camera and she said she's gonna vlog it. So assuming all goes to plan and it goes relatively well and she's able to have the moments where she can chat to you a lot and tell you what's going on and film Andy with what he's doing. It should be just a vlog of their trip on the bus, going into town, um, going back out of town again to where this place is, um, having an hour or whatever it is in the sensory place, coming home again. There's a trip to a cash machine, there's prob probably be a trip to a church or a cathedral or something in Peterborough. I might end up meeting them after work. I've got a doctor's appointment straight after work, but they're due to be leaving town about 4, 4.30. I can be in town for about that sort of time, so depending on how long I'm at the doctors, I might head there and meet them and we might be able to extend the adventure by doing something in town with us all there. But I think it could be, I hope it goes well because he hasn't been out, like I say, hasn't been out with Anna for months. Um, since before we started the vlog, I don't think we were vlogging when I had to drive home from work in the middle of the day to carry him out of the co-op because he was naked on the floor of the co-op. I think that was pre-vlog or else I feel like that would have come up in conversation a few times. Um, so that was pretty much the last time she took him out, because obviously she didn't want a repeat of that experience. That's a story we'll tell you another day. Um, but that was when things were at their absolute worst. And with the medication working, and uh, he is improving. He's still absolutely terrified of the idea of her leaving him there. Um, I think he thinks it's a secret school that she's going to drop him off at and then run away, but she's just going to be there with him the whole time, gets him out of the house, and I think it will be really cool. So, fingers crossed, that will be what tomorrow's vlog is about, but I need to go back to my plan of heading into there and doing my football manager video. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to whoever sent me these. Let me know who you were. And if people do send us stuff, we massively appreciate it, but stick your, stick your name on the little slip so that we know who it was so we can thank you properly because they're really cool and they've done a great job on those headphones. I don't look like a homeless man in homeless man Bluetooth headphones anymore with the little stringy bits of the gaffer tape coming off. So thank you to you particularly, and thank you to everyone else for watching and I will see you maybe not for two days depending on how this adventure goes tomorrow. 